Ivan. We're going to continue our discussion right now with some great business minds. Mary Kramer is the publisher of Crane's Detroit Business. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. And Tom Walsh, who is a columnist for the Detroit Free Press. Thanks so much for being with us. So we're talking business, and this is where the business people flock every year, this time of year, for three days. Emphasis on innovation, entrepreneurship. Good agenda? I think the momentum and the, the comments so far about how that how Detroit fits in that has been very positive, and uh, I think a lot of the buzz outside of the sessions is the success of Governor Snyder over the last year, and the opportunity for Detroit with this consent agreement to really move forward, which would be good for the entire state. Well, this is the governor's audience, Tom. I mean, these are people that support him in terms of business-wise. This is, but there's uh, there's there's two cross currents going on here, and I and I applaud the governor for this one, which we haven't seen publicly yet, but but they've gone out and they've invited site selectors mm -hmm. to come in here um, and meet personally with the governor, which I think may be going on as we speak uh, here today. But I talked to one of them earlier this afternoon and, 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 and I said, so where is Michigan now? He says, Michigan's a big question mark. Nobody really knows what's going on. They know they've done some stuff. They, they, they fixed the tax, the SBT tax, but they did away with tax credits and incentives, and they haven't really been very clear about what replaces them. So competing states are saying they don't have any incentive, any incentives at all. They're mm -hmm. not going to take care of you anymore. Competing states are saying Michigan has no job training. And, and so Snyder wants to hear this unvarnished stuff from the, the site selectors who are saying that Michigan still has a long way to go. And by the way, directly south of you, you got Indiana, which is really on the muscle, has done a lot of things right, and then the cherry on top was right to work. So Michigan's got a long way to go here, and uh, we're only in the early early innings of the Snyder game. How, do, how does Michigan stack up, Mary? Well, I think that, you know, building on what Tom said, for a long time Michigan's strategy was try to get more companies to come here. What the governor has said is, let's grow the companies we already got. And mm -hmm. we just heard a bunch of people this afternoon who, Garden Fresh Salsa, the largest selling salsa, fresh salsa maker in the country in Costco, mm -hmm. $110 million a year. And a, and a really good salsa, by oh, the way. Oh, it's a great salsa, so a great <laughs> salsa. But, you know, it, but they are, they're an example of a homegrown business. And if we can help more Garden Fresh Salsas mm -hmm. build to over $100 million a year, they employed more than 400 people. Multiply that out, and I think the governor's strategy of economic gardening makes a lot of sense. How harmful is the financial crisis in Detroit? How? How harmful is the financial crisis in Detroit to business well, and think, our image I as think a state? Any business wants to go to a place where they have a solid foundation economically, infrastructure-wise, service-wise, public safety to everything else. So to that extent, it's a negative, but, but that negative perception's been out there for a long time. I think, I think the fact that it's coming to a head and that it will be dealt with in some way, shape, or is form. Is actually better? It, you know, gives people some sense that, okay, maybe they're finally going to get, get their arms around this. I, you know, I think some people are looking at it optimistically. Obviously, we haven't got over the hump yet. What do you think, Mary? I think that it's, um, <laughs> I, I think that this is a, an amazing opportunity for Detroit, and I hope the infighting or politics at the very um, uh, local level doesn't get in the way of one amazing opportunity to really make some substantial changes and get the city back on the right path. Yeah, fundamental changes. So basically, city council putting up the legal. Well, I don't know if it was city council. Or I wouldn't sorry, say the, 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 I, the law department of the yes, cities that filed the challenge. Yes, I think the jury's out on who exactly who, who was behind it. that. And, and But that's an example of one step forward, two steps back. And, and, why, and, why, we don't wouldn't some, and why wouldn't someone come forward and say, yes, I supported that. I think that that's, I said that that's what we should There's do. There's a lot of gamesmanship, I think, and I think it's unfortunate because the alternatives to the consent agreement are an emergency manager or bankruptcy. And so those are your choices, folks. Pick, Pick one. one. Uh, the governor was very adamant that he thought that something, something could be worked out. Do you believe that that's just going to be a kind of a bump in the road, Tom? Well, he's, he's, that's his makeup. I mean, he's sort of like, this is where we're going. And until you know somebody orders me to stop, otherwise I have to go to jail for violating you know a judge's order. He's going to go down the path that he thinks this is a viable legal 
way to go, and he's he's just going to move forward. We talked to him earlier today and, and asked him, said, okay, are you, do you want this advisory board to start meeting now without the city mm -hmm. council's nominees? And he said, yeah. He said, just let's keep go. Keep it going. Let's just go. Keep it and going. I, think, I think that's an incentive for the council to, to move. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, uh, we, we talked a little bit earlier with some guests about um, businesses moving into Detroit. Uh, there's been a lot of a rallying cry about e every little business, and, and um, I know that Dan Gilbert has had a lot to do with getting people to move down into the buildings. Uh, do you believe that there are more businesses out there just kind of on the edge, waiting to step in, waiting for more people to move downtown, or are we going to see now a larger influx? I think that what Gilbert has done can't be understated. I mean, I just think it's it it, it, it it can't be overstated he's done he's he's a game changer and what he's doing is very important i think the biggest detriment to investment in the city right now is crime crime and until some uh some things that people can see and feel and 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 the reality is that um that crime goes down whether it's it, downtown is very safe don't get me wrong but the city itself, the perception is that crime is off the charts. And I think that has to be addressed before companies will invest in the city. Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I, clearly public safety is a, a huge ongoing issue. Um, but, but also the condition of, of the infrastructure in and around the city, the lights, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of those things, and the buildings. There are some companies on the fence, I, I won't, Name names since yeah. they haven't. You want to get anybody public, into trouble publicly, but but there are some ad agencies and other companies Waiting that have been out in the suburbs for a long time that could come down. They, they've they've seen other agencies and creative companies clustering, and they think it'd be kind of fun to be down there. And they've looked at some buildings, and it just hasn't quite worked out yet. But there there are some people sitting on the fence. Well, our our page one story this week is about the guy who founded Fossil Watches. Mm -hmm. You know, high end design, fun watches. He has leased space at the College for Creative Studies in the News Center. He's going to make watches and, believe it or not, bicycles. But I think what attracted him to Detroit was the creative. The, when he saw the College for Creative Studies and saw the design coming out of there, he was very attracted to that. So he's restarting. He's, he's still owns stock in Fossil, but he's creating a whole new company, and it's going to be making watches, designing watches and bicycles in the city of Detroit. There is that thought that the kind of anything's possible because yes. it's almost a, a blank canvas in, in, in some places. Easy for a company to, to be able to do that, to get into Detroit and to start that up? I think that we have, um, and I know other media have, has as well, but... The red tape is still a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I listened to an entrepreneur a couple weeks ago talk about different inspectors coming into their place and saying, oh no, now the hinge has to be on the other side of the fire extinguisher box. No, no, move it back. You know, how, many how many trips did it take the guy with the food truck to go down to City Hall to get approval for what is very common in other large cities? Dozens and dozens of trips. So we gotta get that, you gotta get that, if you really want, business to come, you have to figure out how to streamline those processes. And, you also, and you also have to get a couple other things right, because remember, the whole metro area suffered a lot during this Great Recession, so you got lots of empty office buildings out in Troy and Southfield and other places, so you got lots of value out in places where you don't have to pay for parking, you don't have to pay city income tax to your people, so Detroit still has some structural issues that, that the suburbs don't, don't have, have, so it's, it's, they still got work to do. All right, we'll be watching. Tom Walsh from the Free Press, thanks so much. Mary Kramer from Cranes, we so much appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. And again, thanks. if you guys are going to break any news or anything, you <laughs> hear any scoop that you don't, you know, come share it with us again here at Thank the desk. You. We appreciate it. And you are watching our live coverage on myvote.org. Stay with us.